you know, no matter what happens, the good way out, outweighs the bad. And uh, one of these days we'll all get to go home. And when we go home, we're going to look back at this earth and say, you mean I wanted to live down there? <laughs> you know, and, and God is good. So would you stand? We're going to sing together majesty, majesty. Oh, what a, what a great song as we sing. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Have you ever thought about what that song really means? The majesty above all majesties, the king above all kings, the Lord of all lords. He who rules from heaven above yet wants to do business in your heart, in your life, in you as a person. You are not a number to him, but an individual. And he who is the majesty of all majesties cares for you like a father cares for his child. I want to tell you what a, what a great, great Savior we have. I uh, would say to you, if you have looked at the bulletin, that uh, you probably would have figured out we're going to talk about friends this morning, right? Okay, uh, what a friend we have, and what a great friend we have in Jesus our Lord. Now, I want to make an announcement about the bulletins, please. Here it is. We will not be putting song numbers in the bulletin for a while, okay? The reason for that is that always before, I would have my bulletin together Tuesday, get it on Wednesday, it was there. Due to things and schedules and all the doctor visits and so forth, I don't always get it done until the end of the week. And Don needs the information before then. So, we're just going to tell you what you're going to sing Sunday morning. Okay? After all, let me ask you a question and lift your hand. How many of you looked the bulletin to get your hymn number? <laughs> Two, okay. You're outvoted. <laughs> yeah, you're outvoted. I'm sorry. So, uh, so we'll get by without it, right? Okay. So the first song we're going to sing uh, is one that we discussed about not having uh, real familiarity with it. In fact, I don't think we've sung it since I've been here. And so I said you hadn't sung it for a long time past then. So what we're going to do is, if you don't know it, we're going to learn a new song, okay? We can do that on Sunday morning. Uh, <laughs> And uh, someone has wisely left me without a hymn book, okay? <laughs> that's going to make a real, that's going to make a real interesting, okay? Well, I mean, you talk about a service. Four, five people come up to you. Wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, uh, that's the wrong one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so if you will turn to, you know, page 297, if you use your hymn book, uh, the song says, Jesus, what a friend of sinners. 
Now, I don't know, I, I don't know about you, but uh, to me, uh, I'm glad that Jesus is a friend of sinners, aren't you? Do you know, uh, really, the accusation that was made of him was simply this. He eats and drinks with sinners. And I'm thankful for his Savior. In spite of all of his holiness, all of his dignity, and who he is, that he has time for us sinners, aren't you? Oh, what's the 296? Oh, we already sung that, right? Okay, 156. That's why, I could, that's why it didn't look right to me. You know, uh, one of the things that I appreciate here is that uh, you folks don't expect me to be perfect. I can make a mistake and we can laugh together about it, right? Because, you know, the good thing about it is my God doesn't, my God doesn't expect perfection either, so therefore we can make it. So, uh, first of all, just read through especially the first verse. Jesus... What a friend of sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. He's my Savior, makes me whole. Isn't it great to have a friend like that? Amen. So, you can remain seated because we're going to sing through the first verse, okay? And then we'll sing it again. If you don't do okay the next time, we'll sing it again, all right? <laughs> but but let's, uh, let's sing through that first verse. Let's stand and sing it together. Second verse. I think we do the second verse. All right.
Amen. Thank you. Isn't it good to be with God's people? Isn't it good to just worship together, to know the goodness of God? Would you, okay, and we're going to keep this short this morning, okay? But would you just turn around to one person and say, thank God you're with us today. Would you do that? Thank God you're with us today. Brother Bill. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Bill. You come on. Yeah. Hey, brother. Good morning. Thank God you're with us. Good morning, everyone. Good to, good, good to be here. Uh, announcements. Uh, first issue, on June 1st, we're going to have a, on the, 9 o'clock in the morning till about noon, we're going to have a cleanup to try to get things ready for BBS and all the things coming up. So we're going to do that on the 1st of June. Uh, we're also going to, the ladies are going to come that and, and do some other stuff. Okay, good. Uh, another, the second item, we've been, we had to put a shed up a while back and when we rejuggled some spaces upstairs to get that to use for Sunday school, there's some items that we no longer use anymore and don't have a need, so they're in the west end of the pavilion. If you have a, would like to take at home, we're not gonna keep it and it's just gonna go to the landfill if nobody wants it. So I wanted to make that announcement. Uh, VVS is coming up, that's in your bulletin. I look at that if you can get involved in that. Uh, and read the bulletin as far as other announcements there. Uh, um, Donna also wanted me to announce that uh, she's collecting toilet paper rolls for VVS. Okay. So if you guys can start saving those, we'd appreciate it. Okay. Any other announcements that, that I didn't know about? Not, not sure I get everything. Okay. Uh, Prayer issues. Okay, um, let's let's do our scripture reading first, and we're going to go into prayer. We're this morning. We're into Romans chapter five, starting at verse one. Let me give you a minute to get that. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. Hope does not disappoint us because God has poured us out his love into our hearts into the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see at the right time when you were still powerless Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will one anyone die for a righteous man though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners Christ died for us. Since we now have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? Or if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Prayer issues. Do we? I, I know of one, and well, we'll give him. Uh, you, we all know Kyle. Marsha had a emergency trip 
trip to the emergency room this morning. She's there, and Kyle had made previous commitments to preach at another church, so he needs to be there. So we need to keep them in prayer. Uh, we need to keep Pastor Mark and Mary Ann in prayer. Uh, other issues that we need to, yes. Okay. Any other prayer requests that aren't in the bulletin? Okay. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for permitting us to be here today, to come and have time to worship and praise you, and a time to give concerns that we have to you. And we, we lift up to you, Kyle and Marcia, as, as they deal with some issues there. And be with Kyle and give him the words to say where he's, where he's called him to preach. And, and be Pastor Mark and Mary Ann through their struggles right now. We have a number of many. Uh, Jerome White, and thank you for that good surgery there. But it, help us to keep the other ones on our prayer list in prayer and watch over them. Help them to get stronger. And help them. But as your will is done there so that they can be available to do what you're calling them to do. We thank you for the opportunity to be here again today and we praise and worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, uh, offering him. I guess we, I can't, I'm gonna go by that because it's 154. So. I'll lead it. Wait a minute. Okay. 154. 
strengthen us. I pray that um, that the, the message we're about to hear would just make us more bold for you, Heavenly Father. That it would strengthen us, strengthen our faith in you, Heavenly Father. Um, we thank you that we get to give through you this morning, Heavenly Father. It's uh, such a blessing, Heavenly Father, uh, that, that we get to give back to you. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would um, just send the send the going to have uh, some special music for us today. Thank you.
And to make sure nobody is confused, uh, the invitation hymn will be 160, okay? I was, someone said they apologize for me, maybe making me confused, but I want you to know I live in that state. <laughs> pretty much all the time, all right? I want you to turn within your Bible, if you would, to uh, the book of John. As we read together John 15, 9 through 17. As the Father hath loved me, so I love you. Continue you in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken to, do, to you, that your joy may remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater hath love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you that you should go forth and bring, bring fruit, and that your fruit shall remain. That whatsoever you shall ask of my Father in my name, he shall give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. One of the most difficult terms to really define is that concept and that idea of a friend. Now, we all know what a friend is, right? But yet when you try to put it into words, it just doesn't quite fit. How do you describe what a friend is? Someone said that a good friend is the one who will visit you in prison. A real friend is a friend who'll be in prison with you. Well, we kind of understand those concepts as we try to put them together. But I want you to think about two definitions of friendship that Solomon gave in the book of Proverbs. He said, first of all, a friend loveth at all times. The other one is, he said, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And I want us to kind of explore those two concepts, those two ideas, because I want to tell you about my friend Jesus. Now, we, we sing that song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. But do we really, really grasp and consider what it means that Jesus is willing to be our friend? Now, I, I can understand us wanting him to be our friend, but he wants us to be his friend. Isn't that amazing? Well, let's think about what it says. First of all, a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I hope you love your brothers, if you have one, and I hope there are people in your life that you consider to be a brother. But there's some limitations to, to brothers and brotherly love. Number one, brothers don't always get along too well, do they? I mean, you know, my brother was always causing problems. <laughs> you know, we, we, we didn't really fight, but we had a lot of discussions that was physical. But... <laughs> But, but, but you know what I'm saying? 
you know, brotherly love can kind of come and go, whatever the situation is. Another thing about brotherly love is brothers tend to be a little bit competitive, right? No matter what it is, one brother's trying to outdo the other brother, right? Come on, you can be honest about it. You, you've been there, right? Okay. And here's another difficulty. Brothers aren't always close. They're not always near. Uh, I've got a brother, loved dearly. And when we lived on the same farm in two separate houses, we were always there to help each other. Never had to ask if I needed somebody, and I called. Mike was available. I, you know, he just showed up. I tried to do the same for him. But that love and that care is impossible right now. Because he's in West Virginia, and I'm in the Commonwealth. And there's miles to separate us. We can't, you know, as brothers, we can't always be there for each other. Time, circumstances, all these things interrupt. But I want you to know, Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I want you to think about some reasons why. Number one, there's never a time that Jesus isn't there. Now, even when we feel like he's not there, he's there. I love that story about the disciples on the sea, you know, and the waves begin to roar and the winds blow, and, and they're scared to death that they're going to drown, and they, you know, what, what are we going to do? And, and, and Jesus is walking behind them the whole time. Jesus knew what he was going to do. And no matter what happened, he wasn't going to let them sink to the bottom because he told them, go to the other side. So I want you to understand that Jesus is never, ever away from us. He said, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You know, uh, we look at the circumstances and, and everybody gets worried because of all the troubles and trials that happen. We look, we see wars and rumors of wars. We see earthquakes, and, and we see all kinds of diseases and pestilence, and we worry about this and that. But do you understand? Jesus said what? Lo, I am with you until when? The end of the age. It doesn't make any difference whether it's our age that comes to an end or whether it's the age of this world. Jesus is with us. And that is a brother that sticketh closer, or a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. The other reality is this, that brother is always able, always able. Now, my earthly brother, we help each other when we can, but there's a lot of times we can't, right? Not that we don't want to, not that we don't care, but there are, there are friends and brothers that we'd like to do something for, and we just can't, right? But I want you to know something. My friend Jesus, there is nothing he can't do, okay? He is able. He is able. And I, I promise you, whatever needs you have, he is adequate and he is sufficient. Now, would you think about it for a moment? You have 5,000 men plus their families gathered together one day teaching, and then comes supper time. And, uh, you know, they, they were hungry, and his, said to his disciples, you know, we can't send them away hungry. After all, they've been here all day. They've got a long walk home. They're liable, they're liable to pass out, you know. We can't send them home hungry. And the disciples said, well, well what are we going to do? We don't have enough money to buy bread for everyone. And even if they had the money, there was nowhere to buy it. You know, there wasn't any McDonald's. Or anything. It wasn't there. But Jesus knew what he would do. And, and so Jesus knew that he could take those few loaves and fishes and feed that great multitude. Now, nobody else knew that. The disciples didn't know it. That crowd didn't know it. But Jesus knew it. Friend, listen to this friend Jesus for a moment. Number one, he knows the need that you have before you know the need. 
okay? There is nothing that surprises him. He has been there. He knows the problem. And you may not be aware of it, and if you're aware of it, you look around and you say, it's impossible. <laughs> How are we going to feed this many? What are we going to do? Our God will meet whatever need we have in his time, in his way, according to his will, that will be the perfect will. He has no limitations. You, you see, Paul said, you know, he will give to us far abundantly above even that which we can think, hope, or pray for, right? According to what? His riches in heaven. His riches in heaven. That means the rule of the universe, not just earth, but the one who keeps this whole solar system in place will meet the need in your life. He is adequate to meet your needs. He's a friend. He's not only never separated by, by distance. He's not separated by circumstances. But he is a friend that's not separated even from our attitudes. Okay? You know, do you ever feel like you're ashamed to really be honest with God because you don't want to hurt his feelings? Hey, you know what I'm talking about. You, you really, you know, you ever get mad at God? Or are you going to sit there and lie to me? You know, you, it's a human nature. But you know what I found in the Word of God? That there were times those we consider to be our greatest saints got mad at God. God, why did you do this? Why did it happen? Do you know what? Not one time did God ever leave them. Not one time did he ever back away. Not one time did he fail to meet the need that was in their life. Because he loved us, even when we was disobedient. Yes, he's a God who's always with us. The psalmist said, Though I ascend to the heavens or descend to hell, thou art with me. No matter where I go, what I do, where I rejoice, thou art with me. Thou art with me. You know, he's with us in our joys. He's with us in our joys. I know some people have the idea if you're going to be a Christian, you've got to be serious all the time. If you do, that leaves me out. Okay. But God is with us in our joys. Isn't it interesting? He performed his first miracle where? At the wedding of Cain and Galilee. Somebody was having a celebration, right? And he was there to celebrate with him. You know, uh, sometimes people get jealous and they, you know, have trouble with your success and your joy. Sometimes they do. Somebody said a real, a real love and a, and a real friend is the one who can rejoice when you get the new Corvette. Do you know God rejoices in our victories? He rejoices in those things which make you happy. He rejoices with you. Notice what he said. He said, you know, I'm the, I'm the vine, you're the branches. I enable you to bear much fruit. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. God wants you to be successful. He's there with us in our joys. But I want you to know he's also there in our sorrows. He's there in the broken heart moments. When he went to Mary and Martha after Lazarus passed away, the one of the places we'll read where the Bible says Jesus wept. And I've heard, you know, I've heard a lot of people try to make it out. Well, you know, that's because he just was brokenhearted at their unbelief. Well, I think he was brokenhearted at their unbelief, but I want to tell you what. He was weeping because they were weeping. 
He knows our tears. He knows our sorrows and our pains. He cares for us. And no matter what I go through, I know this. My friend Jesus will be there. He'll be there. That's my friend. My friend Jesus. So he's there in our joys. He's there in our sorrows. He's there in our battles. You, you're going to fight a battle or two in your life. I, you know, I don't want to disrupt you, but you're, you're going to go through some battles. Satan is not going to let you walk through this life without a fight. You're going to go through some battles. You're going to go through spiritual battles. You're going to go through the situations where people seem to be against you, even though you're trying to do right. Amen? And you're going to find that those that are closest to you from time to time will turn against you. You'll struggle with disease. You'll struggle with finances. You'll struggle with life itself. But I want to tell you something. Jesus said, Jesus said, Come to me all your labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. You know what he's saying? He's saying, Take your burdens, <laughs> get in the yoke with me. You know, I'll do the pulling. You can go along for the ride. But he said, I will fight your battles. Now, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You never have to fear about being absolutely destroyed. Because our God will protect us in all things. You know, Satan tried to kill him on the cross. He, he rose up the Roman armies, the government. The religious hierarchy of the Jewish faith, the people, the mobs, and they all come against Jesus. And Satan thought he'd won the battle. But you understand, that morning came when he rose from the grave. And when he rose from the grave, death, hell, and all the governments and powers of this world was defeated once and forever. Now listen. If he can win that battle, you'll now have to face a battle that he can't defeat and he can't win. He can't give you the victory. That's our friend, Jesus. But you know, Jesus is also our friend when we fail. I wish I didn't have to talk about this. I, I, I wish I could say to you, you know, I, I know that your faith is strong. I know you love God. I know you're never going to fail. I wish I could tell you I'd never fail. But you know what? I'm humans, and humans fail. In spite of the victories, in spite of the blessings, in spite of what we know about God, we still fail him. And that's one of the great things about Jesus. He's a friend that loveth all times. He loves us when we're up. He loves us when we're down. He loves us when we love him. He loves us when we forget him. He loves us when we fail. As a child of God, a lot of times we get the idea that because sometime we made a mistake, sometime we broke God's heart, sometime we've done what we absolutely know we shouldn't have done, that there's just no use. We might as well give up. But I want you to know something. Before he ever saved you, he knew you would fail. And he still loved you. One of the most encouraging passages of Scripture in the Bible is where Jesus was dealing with Peter. And Peter said, Lord, you know I'm not going to fail. You know, God, I, I'm on your side. I'm strong. You, you know me. And Jesus said, yes, Peter, I do know you. And the cock's not going to crow three times till you've, you've, the cock's not going to crow till you fail me three times. But he said, after Satan has sifted you, after all it's all happened, we'll make it right. Now, folks, Failure is not the end. Failure is not the end because we got a friend that loveth at all times. 
He loves us in our sorrows. Do you know Jesus knows your broken heart? And he cares. The Bible says he puts our tears in the bottle. I'm glad God doesn't only recognize our praise, but he also recognizes our heartbreak. He said to Moses, give the people the prayer. Tell the priest this is how you bless the people. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you strength. Do you know sometimes we just need to see the face of Jesus? And through the darkest day, his face is light, his hope. Well, all the brothers on earth have to leave you when you leave this earth. But I want you to know that my Jesus will walk you through the gate. The psalmist said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they covered me. Jesus views death differently than we do. We as humans have a tendency to look at death as something horrible, something terrible. The end, if you please. But Jesus knows it's the moment for a saint to be transferred to glory. It's not a time of darkness, but a time to know a light that we've never known before. To know a joy that never ends. To know a life without pain, without suffering and sickness. A life without death. A life without lying and cheating and murdering and all the things we distrust. You see, they talk about life insurance, and somehow, you know, that when you die, somebody else is going to gain something from it. I've always thought that's the worst bet a person can make. You're betting you're going to die, and they're bet you're betting you're going to live, and they're betting you're going to die. But Jesus said, I want you to have eternal life. And let me tell you just exactly how much he wanted you to have eternal life. First, let me tell you just a quick story about one of the dearest friends I've ever had. When Anna Marie, my oldest, was just a baby, she severely burnt. She was in the hospital for quite a while. Insurance wasn't that good, and even though it helped, it still left us hurting. We never said anything. We never complained. We prayed about it a lot. And one night, there was a knock on the door. Two of our special friends hand us a bill from the hospital. Mark paid in full. I want to tell you, that's 30-some years ago. They're still my dearest friends, Right? My friend Jesus knew I owed a debt I couldn't pay. He knew all my sins. And he knew my life. And knew I deserved to die and go to hell. And one day, about 2,000 years ago, he took the bill that I owed nailed it to his cross and went through the hell that I deserved and the death that was mine and paid a debt that I could go free. And I want to tell you, I have no greater friend than him. So I want to ask you, is he your friend? He wants to be your friend. He said, it's simple. You are my friends if you keep my commandments. 
And he said, my, my commandment's not grievous. It's not hard. Here's what the Father requires that you believe in his Son. Now, you can't be a friend of Jesus if you don't believe in him. If you don't trust him. You can't have a friend you don't trust. And Jesus said, I paid your debt. Do you believe it? Do you claim it? First of all, to believe on him means you claim him. You trust him. You take him at his word. You trust him as your Lord and your Savior. And his commandment is, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Yeah, if you really have the concept of what Jesus has done for you, you just got to love him, right? You just got to love him. If you love him, you obey him. You see, he said, I don't call you servants, I call you friends. Do you know he has a right to call us servants? Because he paid the price he bought us where he is. I'm kind of reminded of Boaz as he'd walk through the field and he saw his workers over there, his really his servants, and he'd say, may the Lord bless you. And they said, may the Lord bless you. Why? Because they loved one another. They was a friend. I believe Boaz, I, this is not Bible, this is just Mark, okay. But I believe Boaz, if he, one of his servants was there and he's introducing you and say, I want you to meet my friend. I want you to meet my friend. Jesus had a right to call his servants, but he said, I call you my friends because I love you like a brother. I love him. And he said, those are my friends. I want to be friends with each other. Love one another as I have loved you. That means we're going to learn to love each other in spite of our weakness, in spite of our needs, in spite of our failings, in spite of our, our, our mistakes and our hurts and our pains. We're just going to love each other. Because Christ loved us. Let's pray together. Lord, of all the mysteries of the universe and all the questions that's ever come to my mind, never have I tried to wrestle with a reality greater than this that God loved me. That you love me. I don't deserve it. I know it. But your loving us has nothing to do with what we deserve. It's all about your mercy and your grace. That you loved us when we was unlovable. While we were yet enemies, you died for us. Thank you, Father. Lord, we talk about the great things you do for us. Solomon said that if a man would be friends, he must first prove to be friendly. So God, teach us to be a friend of you. To love you. To serve you. And when we don't understand what's ahead, to trust you. To know why the Lord knows the way through the wilderness. So, Lord, you, I pray that you speak to each heart here this morning. You know those who have a personal relationship with you and those who don't. And there's not one here that doesn't have a relationship with you that's, that can't have. Because you said, come to me all you that labor and heavy laden. You said, whosoever heareth, let him come and drink of the waters of life freely. Lord, you know every heart. I pray that you speak, give faith, and give grace that they may accept you your children this morning. Lord, teach us to lean upon you. Teach us to trust you. Lord, just make your face to shine upon us and give us strength. Have your way this morning. And we ask it in your name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I had the hymn 
change for the invitation for a reason. It says, just when I need him most. Jesus is there to comfort and cheer. Just when I need him most. As we stand and sing, first of all, I want to say to you, if you don't have a friend like Jesus, you can't have right now. By faith, you can say yes to him. By faith, you can, you can trust him as your Lord and your Savior. By faith, you can say, Father, I know I can't do it. I know I'm a sinner. I know I don't deserve it, but I trust your grace. I trust your gift. I want to accept Jesus. I invite you to do that. Maybe you're a child of God, and you've struggled, and you've got burdens, and you've got hurts. Just bring them to the Lord and leave them there. Because just when you need him most, he's waiting right there as we stand, as we sing together. Thank you. you. May be seated. You know one thing the friends do is friends eat together, right? There's a real friendship and a bond to set and eat together. You know, one of the things that always stuck out to me about the Lord's Supper was when Jesus said to the disciples, "I have with great desire to eat this meal with you," and then He said to them. Now, this is a preliminary, because I'm not going to eat with you again until we eat anew 
in the Father's kingdom. Jesus gave us this time to kind of remind us that he greatly desires to eat with us in the Father's house. And you're invited to a meal before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to come as a welcome guest. Come at the invitation of Christ. Now what an opportunity as we remember that Jesus paid a price for us to go to heaven. And that price was a broken body and shed blood. So let us reverently thank you for that opportunity to search our hearts. If there's anything that hinders us from taking the Lord's Supper, he said, what? If you'll confess our sins, he is faithful just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is a family meal. It's for us that know the Savior. For those of us who are part of the family. So let us together remember Christ as we take the Lord's Supper. Brother Dave, would you ask a blessing on the bread, please? Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for going on the cross. Heavenly Father, thank you for the broken body.
as they were eating, Jesus took bread and broke it and blessed it and said, Take heed, this is my body which is broken for you. Likewise, he also blessed the cup. Brother Wayne, would you please ask a blessing of the cup? In like manner also, Jesus took the cup after he had eaten, saying, Drink you all of this, for this represents the New Testament that is in my blood, which is shed for many. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he comes. Till he comes.
it's common for the Jewish people when they do Passover to end with this phrase next year in Jerusalem heard of that would you say with me next time in the father's house next time in the father's house let's stand together as they sang a hymn and, and went out let's sing that hymn we sing so often I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God people said amen, amen. amen. brother Paul would you dismiss please dear heavenly father we are grateful to know that um, as uh, just this world is uh, it's a hard time out there but Lord we know that we go with you and that you are our friend and that um, you will never leave us nor forsake us and dear heavenly father we ask that the light that um, is in this church that it will be in us lord and dear heavenly father we would take that light into the world to share your joy and your peace and your friendship with everyone we come in contact with in jesus name amen, amen. amen.